Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and today we're going to take a look at the Suku Spring Collection. And this is going to be part one because I did place an order, which will be part two, but I had a little issue with my order. So the items featured here today are going to be PR from Suku. Thank you so much for sending those. And then I will have part two up with my order when that arrives. So it's just, it's been a little bit delayed. In addition, we're going to be taking a look at the new Sonia G Kiyaki brushes. So we have the Niji and the Buffer in the Kiyaki set. These are not new shapes. We're going to take a look at these, uh, you know, kind of briefly do a couple comparisons so you can see how they compare to the full size. And you can see me using these in the demos here today as well. Now, these two were gifted to me by Sonia G and Beautylish. So thank you so much. And let's go ahead and look at the Suku collection. The Suku Spring Collection has already launched at Selfridges, which is where I purchased mine from. And then it will be launching on February 3rd at Harrods, Liberty London, and Cult Beauty. So we've got a mix of limited edition and new items. And let me show you what I got. And again, all of the items featured here today were gifted and then the rest of the collection will be in my purchases in part two. So this here is quad number 13. These are the signature color eyes, and this will be permanent. Anything permanent in the Suku collection is going to have a number under 100. Anything over 100 is limited edition. So this quad here will be permanent. Let's go ahead and swatch that. So we have kind of this peachy shimmer here, and you can dab this on to get really like a scattered starlight effect, or you can pile it up a little bit more to get a bit more of a shimmer here, but it's going to be fairly light. And then we have this soft matte. Uh, it's not quite a taupe, but almost a taupe. It's a little bit more brown than a true taupe, uh, but it does, you know, it leans a touch cool. And then we have kind of this really beautiful like terracotta matte. Look at this. So you've got just that touch of orange in there to make it a true terracotta. You've got that base of more of like a brown hue in there. So, I mean, it's really close to that terracotta pot kind of color. And then our last shade here is going to be a shimmer. And this is going to be a burgundy. It's a soft burgundy. It's got a little bit more red and you can see it definitely has a bit of a shimmer to it. Now one thing to note, the color of the shimmer between the first shade and the fourth shade does look to be about the same. We have a, a kind of a soft peachy base here, but the actual like shimmer glitter particles are kind of this like soft peachy champagne shade in both of those. They are incredibly finely milled. You don't feel them, you know, it's not gonna be like a glittery chunky mess or anything like that. So that's one of the things about Suku that's so fantastic. Their eyeshadows can be very subtle. You can build up the colors, but overall it's a very sophisticated look and let's move on to the blush now all three of the blushes that they released are limited edition and this one here is shade number 104 so i have to say they all look really beautiful uh, and they sold out fast uh, from selfages so if you are looking to get these you know you're gonna have to probably go pretty quickly when they do launch at Suku and at not Suku at Liberty and Cult Beauty and Harrods. So here you can see it kind of buffed out. So that's 104. Now 104 you can see is kind of like a cross between tangerine and mandarin orange. So it's really a kind of like a tangerine, but you've got a little bit of that more yellow tone mandarin in there without being a really yellow. So I think it's a really beautiful shade. And honestly, this whole color story here to me screams summer sunset. And then one of the most exciting items in this collection are the new treatment wrapping lip products. So these are their new lip glosses. These are replacing the previous lip glosses and these are actually more of a lip balm lip gloss hybrid. So I have two of the shades. They did release five shades and then um, there's a, a sixth one that's a limited edition, shade 101, which looks lavender, but is essentially clear. So I don't have that one yet, but it is one that I ordered. So here is shade number four. You can see how well that goes with the color story here. 
And then this one here is number five, which is also what's on my lips right now. There you go. What a beautiful color. Let me put a little bit next to that, you know, kind of where my hand bends. It's hard to get a good swatch there. So that's number five. And you can see this is going to be kind of like a, a pink rosy shade. There is a faint blue hint to it, but it's really gonna be pretty much a neutral rose. And you can see that number four is gonna be uh, more of an orange-based terracotta. It's, it's more burnt orange than terracotta, but it does go very well with this. But you can see that the eyeshadow here has more brown in it than the lip gloss. So I have a few demos to go over of these products. We'll take a look at those while we go over some product details, and then we'll do some comparisons of these items. Now again, thank you so much to Suku for sending me these items. I have to say I love Suku makeup. I think it is one of the best makeup lines on the market. Unfortunately, it can be a little bit difficult to get their products sometimes because, you know, collections like this, you know, the limited edition items sell out very quickly. Sometimes the permanent items sell out quickly and they take a little while to get back. But I'm really appreciative of how recently you know, Suku has really done a mix of limited edition and permanent items in all of their collections. So that's definitely something that I, I find very helpful. So if we're looking at the Suku Signature Eye Quad, I have to say I really like this one. You know, I think it's really pretty. It's not my normal color story. It's definitely more orange. Everything performs beautifully. It's honestly probably not one that I'm gonna reach for that often because they are not really my colors but it is something that I find very striking. And I have to say my favorite shade in here, surprisingly, aside from the this like taupey brown, is the orange. So, uh, you know, it, it's just, I really like those. <laughs> but this burgundy shade, one of the things that I think really helps this palette stand out from all of the seas of pinks that we have been seeing from a variety of brands, and this is true for other Suku pink quads as well, there is something about the way that they create their pink shades, something about the undertones that they use that don't really give you that red eye look. So there's something there. They have a little bit more depth to the colors and the base seems to just, it works a little bit better instead of having more of like a red base. Your bases are a little bit more neutral in even these pink shades. And I think it helps them perform better on a variety of skin tones instead of giving you kind of that red eye illness kind of look. So overall, I think everything in this quad performs very well. And I think it's a really nice color story. Again, it really reminds me of a sunset. And I think it's just, you know, it's really beautiful. It also kind of reminds me of fall. So we'll have some comparisons with that in a couple of minutes. Let's move on to the blush. Now, moving on to the blush, we are looking at the Melting Powder blushes. And I have just heard word, you know, originally when these blushes launched, they were not replacing the Pure Color blush, which is sort of that gradient blush that Suku has. However, I have just recently heard that the Pure Color blush will be going away and the Melting Powder blush will be, you know, kind of taking its place. So we'll just have the Melting Powder blush in the future. So it is already getting harder to source some of the Pure Color blushes. If you're interested in those, definitely take a look. And the Melting Powder blush is kind of one of those gel powder kind of formulas. It feels like a powder goes on like a powder, but after it's on your skin for a little bit, the heat of your skin helps the pigments actually melt into your skin to give you kind of more of that, you know, one with your skin kind of look that you can get from a gel product. So that's the whole purpose behind these gel powder blushes. They are beautiful. So I have to say, I do really like them. I personally love both formulas from Suku and I would love them to keep both of them around, but uh, you know, definitely something to consider. So the Melting Powder Blush here in 104, you can see that I applied that in a couple of different ways, just so you could see how different brushes perform. So first up, we use the Sonia G Soft Cheek. That's gonna be a fluffy dyed goat hair brush. It's not gonna pick up quite as much product as an undyed or a buffing brush, but I wanted to show you a light application. And then on the other side, we did use the Sonia G Smooth Buffer. 
and you can see you can really buff that into your skin and you can tell just by buffing it into the skin that you get a little bit of a soft sheen from the blush. I do not have any highlighter on today or in either of these demos. And then in the next demo, I used the Kiaki buffer. And you could see, obviously, its performance is going to be the same as a smooth buffer. And then I also use the Niji brush. Now, the Niji brush is technically a bronzer brush. It works great for that. You can also use this for contour, which I am. I have that with the Surat Grisai shade. So you can use that with contour. But I wanted to show it to show you the brush being used for blush as well, because if you are traveling, chances are you want multi-purpose brushes. And this brush works great for that. You can also use it all over for face powder as well. Now this blush, just so you know, I do have the Clay de Peau Radiant Cushion Foundation on with a dusting of the Suku Loose Powder from the previous collection. So it's shade 101 in the Oil Rich Powder. It's the Lavender Powder. And I love that. I have requested, you know, to for that to be a permanent item. So they did say, you know, they would pass that along. So if you are interested in that being permanent, please let Suku know that that is something that you are interested in seeing become permanent. Now, moving on to the new lip glosses, I have to say, I really love the texture of these. These are very comfortable on the lips. They feel very nourishing. They don't really feel like your traditional lip gloss or liquid lipstick. They really feel more like a hybrid. Think of a you know, a lip balm, you know, one of those like lip butter lip balms. So it's kind of got that thicker, creamier texture to it mixed with a little bit of lip gloss. And that's the texture of these on the lips. Now, in comparison, you know, I just had a review on the new Clay de Peau Rouge Creme lipsticks and how those feel on the lips. I would have to say there are some comparisons. Those feel more like a melted lipstick whereas these have a bit more of that balmy texture. So there are some similarities there. I think they're both great. The weight on the lips, I would have to say the Suku is slightly thinner than the Clay de Peau overall, but you know, it's, they're, they're, they both feel very nourishing. I have to say, I'm really impressed with how these new lip products are performing. So these two shades I think are gorgeous. Obviously we've got number four, which is gonna be a warmer tone shade, and number five here is gonna be a cooler tone shade. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these, and both of these shades are permanent. All right, so I do have a couple of comparisons. These are both gonna be Suku shadows. This is the 13, the permanent, and this is a limited edition that came out, uh, I think it was two years ago now, this is 104. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite Suku shadow quads of all. You know, it's totally not my typical color story, but I love this. And this is one that I still regularly reach for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my other arm so we can kind of look at these side by side. And you can see that we are starting off kind of with, it's a little bit more of a silvery champagne shimmer. And then, oh, I didn't get a very good swatch of that. This is more of a soft beige matte. Then we have this, you know, kind of this orange shimmer here. There's a touch of brown in there, but it's a bit more of a coppery shade. And then we have this soft warm brown shimmer. So that's how 104 compares to uh, number 13. So 13 and 104 here. And you can see how close they are. So you can see that this orange shade here is gonna be more coppery in quad number 104. The other shades don't quite match up, but you still kind of get a similar vibe overall. And this is the quad that it made me think of the most. So this is 120 limited edition, and this is 13, the permanent. You can see just looking at them that they do have, you know, quite a few similar looking shades. So let's take a look at this one. All right, so here's 120. We've got more of a soft, warm pink shimmer. And then this is more of a, you can see it's a satin. It's a warm tone pink. You definitely have like, it's like that warm salmon pink. And then we have kind of this, this brown here. It's like, it, it's kind of a neutral brown really. And then we have this burgundy shade here. And this burgundy shade, I mean, it's really beautiful. You can see it's kind of like a softer version of that in 13. 
and you can see that the brown in 13 is going to be cooler than that in 120 and we have more of a pink shimmer versus more of a peachy champagne in 13 but overall these are going to be very very similar and this 120 was limited edition and i think adding 13 really helps those who missed out on 120. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this blush. This blush is limited edition, shade 104. I did a YouTube short and Instagram reel with, you know, these particular shades with some comparisons, but I did miss two that I wanted to compare. So this is Surat Brillant and Surat blushes are incredible. I think that their formula is most similar to the pure color blush that is going away from suku so you can see this is going to be brighter more vibrant it's more of a coral with more like neon orange in it than true coral and then we have flamme and this is going to be a shimmery blush and here's flamme you can see this is more like pumpkin orange whereas 104 is going to be softer we're just going to buff that a little bit right here and you can see there's some shimmer in there so I did want to add these two. So we've got Surat Brillant and Surat Flamme. So let's take a look at some other comparisons. And this is the permanent shade in the Melting Powder Blushes from Suku in shade number six. I'm going to put this right here. So you can just compare the permanent versus the limited edition. You can see this is going to be a lot brighter. It's even a bit more orange than the Surat Brillant, which is more corally in comparison but it's a really beautiful, bright, vibrant orange. I have gotten the question uh, from a couple of people which one I prefer. It's really hard to say, I think they are different, but I do think that 104 might be, it's a little bit easier for me to use because it is lighter, but I love the tone of six a little bit more. Like I love this brightness, but for me, I need to use a really light hand to um, you know, apply that nicely on my skin tone. I really love both of them though. I think though, if I really had to choose, I would go with six just for that particular brightness. Now, in my opinion, the closest shade is actually this Dior Autumn Mood Blush. This is 332. This came out mm, two years ago, well, maybe. Maybe it was last year. And you can see how that compares here. Let me put the Suku right with that. So here's the Suku 104. We're just gonna put that right down here so you can kind of see how that compares. You can see that the Dior is gonna be more similar. This, however, has more of a golden undertone. There's more yellow in it. So actually, I don't really like Autumn Mood on me personally because there's more of that yellow. So it doesn't work as well with my skin tone. We have more orange versus yellow in the Suku 104. So that would be my preference. And then just a couple more. This is the Tom Ford Shane Illuminate Blush in Peach Poison. So we're going to look at the peachy side here. And, you know, again, really beautiful color. Let's just put this here. This is just kind of a lipstick stain that I have not been able to remove. But you can see this is going to be more vibrant. It's also a little bit more pink in it than the Suku. I'll just buff that out a little bit right there so you can see what that looks like. When you buff that out, you can really tell that there is more pink in the Tom Ford. And last up, this is one of the Givenchy Prisma Libra blushes, and this is number three. Yes, three Voile Corail. And, you know, I looked at all of them. This was really the closest one to this. Um, but you can see it's still, it's definitely more coral. There's more pink in it. It's really beautiful. By the way, these blushes I think are fantastic. I really hope the US gets some soon. But you can see it's very, very different from the Suku. It's going to be cooler and brighter. Now with the lips, I wanted to first talk about one of Suku's other liquid lipstick products. These are, they have the lip fogs, which are gonna be the matte ones like this. And then they also have the lip glow. So these are liquid lipsticks. They are gonna be a little bit different than the actual lip glosses that they have now. This here is the matte. This was a limited edition shade in 104. Really like this one. You can see it has a bit more brown than shade four in the lip gloss. On the lips, these are gonna be more of your thinner, lightweight, you know, kind of 
one of those textures that you don't feel or notice as much. So particularly the mattes. The Glow is going to feel a little bit more similar, but there's more of that vinyl texture and it's a little bit thinner on the lips as well. So this is shade 102 in the Lip Glow. So these are my two closest. You can see this is going to be more of a more of an orangey brick red. Both of those were limited edition shades. So if you have them in your collection already, you know, great, but otherwise you probably won't be able to source these. You can see how pigmented the lip glows are and they are, you know, they are again more of a liquid lipstick versus a liquid lip balm type formula. So there's a little bit of that textural difference there with the lip glosses feeling just a little bit more cushiony and you can see that you can sheer out the lip gloss a little bit more, but they are pretty pigmented. One more comparison to shade number four. This is the Byredo. These are the their lip vinyls that came out um, just a few months ago. And this one here is Vesuvio. And I hate the way they do their names. You have to actually pull the sticker off to see the names. Um, but Vesuvio here, and these are really nice. These feel more like the Suku lip glows on the lips than the new lip glosses. And you can see that this is going to have more of a reddish vibe compared to shade four, which has more orange. It's kind of a softer version of the lip glow in 102. So that's going to be, those are my closest color comparisons to shade four. Now shade five is this beautiful pink. It almost looks like it has a touch of mauve in there. There's a tiny bit of blue in the base, but it's still pretty neutral. My closest in the Suku products, this is the Suku Lip Vog in 105. This is going to be significantly warmer though. So you can see that that is more of a, a true rose. It's kind of like a deep rose pink and really beautiful, but it is gonna be warmer. And then for color comparisons, this is one of the new Clay de Poe uh, Rouge Cremes. This one is 206 Caliandra, one of my absolute favorites out of the ones I picked up. You can see this is gonna be much more pigmented. Again, this is a liquid lipstick, so it's not gonna sheer out as much, but you can see color-wise, they're going to be fairly similar. You can see that Caliandra has a bit more pink in it, Obviously it's more pigmented in general. This will truly be more of a liquid lipstick on the lips. And then the Byredo vinyl, this one here is, this is the one I actually use the most. This one is flushed. And yeah, I really like this shade, but you can see it's more mauve. So it's not quite as pink, definitely a bit more purple in there. It's kind of your true dusty mauve kind of shade. So those are my closest comparisons for the lip products. Now let's talk a little bit about the Sonia G brushes. All right, so let's start off with the Sonia G Kiaki Buffer brush. So this is the same as the Smooth Buffer. However, it is in your Kiaki wood handle. This is your travel size version. And I'm really glad that she created this because the Smooth Buffer is one of my most used brushes, so having a travel size version is fantastic. So they did gift this, <laughs> this to me in PR, but I actually didn't know. I already ordered it at that point. So um, yeah, I would definitely buy this one again. And we're just gonna do a few quick comparisons here just so you can kind of see. This is the Smooth Buffer, and you can see here that the one here in the Niji, mine's actually a little bit taller. The bristles are a little bit longer versus here is the Buffer Pro, or well, it's called the Buffer Pro now, but this is the face one, the original. You can see that the face one is larger, okay? But you can see that our bristle length, the face one is ever so slightly larger, but they're very, very close, much closer here than the smooth buffer. Let's put those all lined up. So you can see there's a little bit of a gradient in the length of the bristles there. But again, um, diameter wise, your smooth buffer is going to be more like that. Now, because of the longer bristles, it does fan out a little bit more. So it's actually closest to the smooth buffer, but because of that length, it's kind of an in-between, which means it's really good for buffing face powder and blushes, whereas the Smooth Buffer you can use for face powder as well, but it's a little bit smaller, so I typically just use this for like blush products, whereas this, when you're traveling, you know, it's very versatile to use it all over. So I think that's kind of a key distinction uh, for getting this one 
over these. And as a matter of fact, if you don't have any of these and you're looking for just one to start with, this is kind of in between the two. So this would be my recommendation because it's probably gonna be your most versatile. Now, just a few other quick size comparisons here. This is the Refer 17. It was their original foundation brush by uses for cream blushes. You can see it is much smaller overall. <laughs> so we've got that one. Then we have the FO2 from Chikahoto. This is Silver Fox. You can see, again, this is gonna be much smaller as well. And both of these should only be used for powders, by the way, because this is going to be your uh, dyed go hair. It's very soft. And this one here is Silver Fox hair. So um, something to note. Another one, you know, the refer you can use with anything and this Chantecaille Buff and Blur brush you can use with anything. You can see that the Buff and Blur, it's synthetic and it just it kind of stays a little bit more tightly packed because of those synthetic fibers. It's not gonna fan out as much, it doesn't bloom. And that's kind of what it's called when the, the Food Aid blushes, they bloom after washing, you know, the bristles kind of spread out a little bit more and so forth. And you can see though that the Buff and Blur is actually going to be a larger brush head. So it's shorter bristles, but the diameter is going to be a little bit larger overall. Likewise, this is the Westman Atelier. This is their blender brush, and this is essentially the same as the Chantecai. You can see that the size of everything is pretty comparable, and they're both synthetic. So you can see that the Westman Atelier is gonna be a little bit larger overall. And my last size comparison, this is the Kyoto F04 brush, formerly known as the Fupa 03. You can see that the Sonia G is gonna be a little bit longer, overall and if you actually were to compress the bristles our diameter is actually going to be larger here with the Kyoto. this is a foundation brush and it is synthetic but i know you know it's my it's one of my all-time favorite foundation brushes i use this all the time so i figure it's a good comparison just in case it's one that people already have Next, we're gonna take a quick look at the Sonia G Kiyaki Niji brush. And Niji means rainbow, and that's pertaining to our shape here. This is really a great bronzer contour brush. You know, if you're looking for really uh, sharp contour, this is gonna to be too large for that. But if you're looking for something a little bit more subtle where you can brush out the gradient and so forth, this is a great brush for that. Now, this is the Niji Pro. This is the brush it was based off of. There is a difference. So this is gonna be dyed Psycho goat hair, very soft, just like the buffer brush. Okay, they're both gonna be dyed so Psycho Ho, whereas the Niji Pro here, we actually have a mix of dyed and undyed goat hair. They are both powder only. They're both very, very soft. And what you can see here is that our bristles, not only do they go in a rainbow like this, but they also go in a rainbow this way. So we actually have our shortest ones here and they gradually go up. We have a little bit of a flat space at the top there. So a really beautiful brush. You can see here that the Kiaki version and the Pro version, their brush heads are going to be identical in shape and size. And I only have a few comparisons here. I wanted to first take a look at the Jumbo Bronzer. This is you know, my favorite bronzer brush, actually. This is more like a very, very large uh, blush brush in shape. And I don't wear bronzer all the time. So for me, when I use it, I prefer kind of a light dusting more as like bronzer as blush. So for me, this is really you know great for that. Whereas this is gonna be more targeted or if you really wanna buff in that product. Uh, you know, this is great if you're somebody who does wear a lot of bronzer and you put it around like your forehead and everything, you wanna kind of buff that in the cheeks, you can put it in this way, then turn it to kind of buff that in. You can use this for contour, which I showed you in the cheek demo before. So overall, just wanted to show you the difference in size and shape of these. These are both dyed Psycho. Both fantastic brushes. I have to say they're both ones I use regularly. Now we have the Sculpt One brush from Sonia G, which is, I, I believe that's no longer in existence, but I'll have to double check on that. You can see here, first of all, difference in the ferrule. Look at the shape of this compared to the roundedness of this. That is going to determine how these products, how the bristles actually perform here. So it's gonna be kind of like a looser, airier feel on the ends here, whereas this is gonna remain a little bit tighter. 
I have to say that the Nietzsche is going to be softer because it is dyed versus undyed. And honestly, I don't really use my Sculpt One brush. Um, this is one that for me just never really, it just didn't really meet my purposes as much. It's not something I use that often. So between the two of them, I personally prefer the Nietzsche because it's a little bit more compact and it gives you a little bit more control because these bristles are a little bit more tightly secured here. They don't get as airy. So it's a little bit easier to have control over where you're placing product. And just a quick comparison here, you can see that the Niji is actually gonna be a little bit wider. Um, you know, this can look a bit wider, but keep in mind, it's not com as compressed as the Niji. So overall, the Sculpt One is gonna have a bigger head overall, um, but the Niji is going to be a little bit wider going this way. And my last comparison is one of the Hinoki brushes. I absolutely love both of the brushes in this Hinoki set. I truly hope this comes back or these shapes come back. You know, I think this for me, I personally love this for blush and bronzer, but it's not as effective for contour because you can see it's a bit airier. And this is going to be the Saipikaho hair. So it's a little bit more a little bit more delicate even, very, very soft. And you can see here that the Niji is going to be a larger brush head. They do have a similar ferrule, so performance will be fairly similar with that, but one of the biggest difference here is this is not gonna be as large, but the bristles are just as long, making our ratio a little different, causing this one to actually perform as an area brush than the Niji. So just some things to note here, but just in case you have any of these in your collection, you can get an idea of how they compare in size and shape. So I hope this was helpful. Overall, I have to say, I really love both of these new brushes. And in particular for me, this buffer, the Kiaki buffer is a must have for me. Um, you know, since I, I think the smooth buffer is definitely, you know, one of my most used brushes, one of my most recommended brushes. So definitely if you haven't tried any of those, I would start with that one because it is a great in-between size. And compared to the Niji Pro versus the Kiaki Niji, you know, I think they're both great options and, you know, performance wise, they're going to perform the same. So even though the hair is slightly different on the Niji Pro versus the Niji, your performance isn't really going to change based off of those. Now, I wanted to say again, thank you so much to Sonya G and Beautylish for sending those over and also to Suku. Now, Suku sent me all of those makeup items for PR, but they also sent me some skincare. So I'll be trying these out and I'll let you guys know in a longer video. It takes me a while to test skincare, but one of the things I'm most excited about is this SPF 50, the protecting day cream. So uh, I'll definitely be letting you guys know about this one. They also sent me the Aquafons kit and I actually have used this before. So this, um, you know, it's a really nice, if you have skin that is like normal combo oily, I think this is a great line for that because it's lightweight. Um, but you know, like, I feel like if you have drier skin, you're going to need more than this, but I think it's a really nice, you know, set of products. And it's something that, you know, I have actually been using on and off for a couple of years, you know, some of these products in here. So the other thing they sent me, and this is something that I buy, um, about every other year I pick up this, they always have around this time of year, a designing massage cream kit. So the Genkin Massage, which by the way, I'm terrible at mostly just because I have a hard time spending the time to do it. But anyway, this is a kit. It comes with a cloth. This is your sponge cloth to use there. You get a little, um, this is the Violum or Violume. And I actually have not tried this. So I, I did not get that in my last kit that I bought. And then this is the clarifying toner. That's a nice toner. But this is your piece de resistance. And this is the designing massage cream. And I haven't checked the prices this year, but typically this set is about the same or maybe like a couple dollars more than buying just the cream on its own. So it's totally worth getting the set. 
And whether you do the Genkin massage or not, this is just a really nice, like heavyweight moisturizer. And it doesn't really have too much of a scent. Like, I don't know, let me look at the package and see if there's fragrance in here. Well, I would check, but it's all in Japanese, so I'm not really sure. I do smell a little bit of kind of like one of those herbally, fresh floral kind of fragrances. It smells more like a lightweight, um, you know, artificial fragrance to me, you know, kind of like what you would smell like in a spa, um, but it doesn't smell very strong. It's very, very subtle. So let me just go ahead and show you the texture of this. So this is the texture, just look at that. You can see that this is gonna be kind of like a thick cream. You can put this on as a face mask and wash it off or just use this as an overnight cream or if you have really dry skin, you could use this during the day even. But this is intended to, you know, do the, the massage and everything on your skin and the Genkin Massage, they have a lot of videos, tutorials of that. You can actually, you know, request to do a, um, live with somebody from Suku and they will teach you how to do it. I've done that before. And it's just, it's really moisturizing, but it works with like lymphatic drainage and so forth. So really, really nice cream. If you're in the market for something like that, definitely check that out because I think these sets are the way to go versus purchasing it individually. Oh, and the set also has the Suku Moisture Rich Mask and I have not tried the mask. So I will have to try that out. I so I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. And again, I will have part two of the Suku Spring Collection up when my order arrives. And thank you so much for watching. So please leave your thoughts down below in the comments and I'll see you very soon. Have a wonderful day.